So hello again, everybody. Thank you again for joining today's Cybersecurity Awareness Month webinar series. My name is Jay Covington. I'm the Awareness and Outreach Section Chief for the Stakeholder Engagement Division at the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. I will be your host. So a little background. As of October 2023, this marks the 20th annual Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Since 2004, the President and Congress have declared the month of October as Cybersecurity Awareness Month. It's a month dedicated to the private and public sectors working together to raise awareness about the importance of cybersecurity. CISA and the National Cybersecurity Alliance are partnering once again this year to expand cybersecurity awareness on the national and even global scale. We want to educate individuals and organizations about potential cyber threats and encourage the adoption of best practices for digital and online safety. This year's overarching theme, Secure Our World, calls for all of us to action to adopt improved and ongoing cyber hygiene. By committing to the safe online behaviors, we can easily minimize and prevent cyber criminals and hackers from infiltrating our devices and online accounts. The goal of this campaign is to implement four meaningful key behaviors that help to secure our world. Those behaviors are one, use strong passwords. Two, enable multi-factor authentication. Three, recognize and report phishing. And four, updating your software. Each week this October, we will take a deeper dive into each one of these four behaviors and understand why their implementation is so vital. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the importance of multi-factor authentication. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker and subject matter expert on multi-factor authentication, Grant Dasher. Now, Grant is the Architecture Branch Chief for the Office of the Technical Director for Cybersecurity here at CISA. A Harvard graduate, Grant has deep experience and expertise both on the technical implementation of cloud and hybrid cloud enterprise systems, as well as security and compliance requirements of cloud adoption in the enterprise from his work at DHS the White House, and even Google. Now, Grant is a huge asset to all of us at CISA. I look forward to learning more about multi-factor authentication from him today. I will now hand it off to you, Grant. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Jay. As Jay stated, my name is Grant Dasher, and I will speak to you about the importance of multi-factor authentication. The utilization of multi-factor authentication in the realm of cybersecurity is of the utmost importance. As we celebrate CISA's 20th Cybersecurity Awareness Month, it is crucial to help everyone understand the significance of multi-factor authentication, also known as MFA, and how it can safeguard our digital lives. Today, I will cover a number of topics, starting with what is MFA, then why is MFA important, who should utilize MFA, how we can enable MFA, and finally, where should we implement MFA? First, what is MFA? We need more than a password to protect our online accounts. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, is one of the strongest tools to prevent cyber intrusions. Enabling MFA makes us significantly less likely to get hacked. There are many names for MFA, but they all mean more or less the same thing. Opting into an extra step to validating your identity when you visit trusted websites and applications in order to confirm that it's really you. Though it is not yet an industry default option, many companies provide us with a step to double check our identity using MFA. Instead of asking you only for a password, which can be reused, more easily cracked, or stolen, they can verify it's you by asking for two forms of information. First, they'll ask you for something you know, like a password or PIN number, along with something you have, like an authentication application or a confirmation text on your phone, or something indicating who you are, like a fingerprint or face ID. This combination of steps is a lot harder for an attacker to fake. Utilizing MFA is the single most important thing you can do to protect your digital information. Why is MFA important? Adversaries are increasingly harvesting credentials through phishing emails or by identifying passwords reused by, from other systems. 
MFA increases security because even if one credential is compromised, unauthorized users will be challenged to meet the second authentication requirement, largely thwarting their ability to access the targeted device network or system. MFA is a layered approach to securing your online accounts and the data they contain. When you enable MFA, you must provide a combination of two or more things to verify your identity before the service grants you access. Using MFA protects your account more than just a username or password. In fact, users who enable MFA are less likely to get hacked, according to a Microsoft survey of their cloud study. Why? Because even if one factor like your password becomes compromised, unauthorized users will be unable to meet the second authentication requirement, ultimately stopping them from gaining access to your accounts. Let me paint a picture of how MFA can make a difference in our lives. Imagine a scenario where a hacker manages to obtain your password. In a conventional login, this would grant them full access to your account. However, with MFA in place, the hacker's efforts would be in vain. They would require an additional factor, something only you possess, to gain entry. Your sensitive data and personal information remain secure, even in the face of such an attack. As the world becomes more interconnected, we witness an ever-increasing number of data breaches, identity thefts, and cyber attacks. The consequences of these crimes go beyond financial losses. They shake the very core of our trust in the digital world. In this regard, MFA becomes an essential shield against those malicious acts, protecting not only our personal information, but also the integrity of our online interactions. I personally feel a sense of urgency when discussing MFA. It's not just a digital buzzword. It's a means to empower ourselves and regain control over our online lives. We must wholeheartedly embrace its utilization and encourage its adoption across various platforms, from our social media accounts to our banking systems and everything in between. Who should utilize MFA? By now, you've probably already guessed what I'm going to say when it comes to the topic of why we should use MFA and who should use it. Everyone, everyone should utilize MFA. Wherever there is technology, there needs to be MFA. While cybersecurity might seem intricate at its core, it revolves around people, starting with all of us. Regardless of your role, whether you're deeply entrenched in cybersecurity, a supplier, infrastructure steward, a student, a job seeker, or just a regular internet user, your role in cybersecurity is pivotal and is part of our collective effort to reduce the risks we all face online. By committing to safe online behaviors, we can minimize or prevent cyber criminals and hackers from infiltrating our devices and online accounts. And that starts with MFA. How? Well, start by looking at the security settings of your most used accounts. You may see options to enable MFA listed under two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication, or two-step verification. There are many ways you may be asked to provide your second factor of authentication. One is a text message or an SMS or email. When you log into your account, you'll be asked to provide a code sent to you by text message or email. Of note, this is actually the weakest form of MFA, and you should really only use it if none of the other options are available, although it is very common, and it's still better than nothing. The second option that you sometimes see is an authenticator app. An authenticator app is an app that generates login codes on your phone. When prompted for the code, you open the app and read the number and type it into your website. These codes usually expire every 30 or 60 seconds. Another common mechanism is a push notification. Instead of a numeric code, the website or service pushes a request to your phone to ask you to let you in. You'll see a pop-up notification and you can confirm the login request or deny it if you were not initiating the authentication request. Sometimes this will show up in combination with a number that you have to type in. The final option that's growing increasingly common is FIDO or Fast Identity Online. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about passkeys. It's considered the gold standard of multi-factor authentication. The FIDO protocol is built into all major browsers and phones and an increasing number of websites. In fact, just today, Google made an announcement expanding the use of FIDO authentication inside of their platform. It can use secure biometric authentication mechanisms like facial recognition, a fingerprint, or voice recognition, or a numeric code, and it's built on the foundation of strong cryptography. 
Sometimes it even uses a physical device, a key, essentially an encrypted version of a key to your house. More information on FIDO keys is available from the FIDO Alliance. Whichever form of MFA you use, you can know that you are taking a meaningful step to regain control over your personal accounts, sensitive systems, and confidential information to protect unauthorized access. Where should we enable MFA? Well, with MFA, we can protect our email, social media accounts, bank accounts, billing systems, remote access technology, gaming platforms, and really any digital account that has a password. Enabling MFA on your devices can even help to protect you if your passwords are compromised through phishing attacks or other means. Now that you know what it is, you'll see prompts for multi-factor authentication all over. Opt in to ensure that you are the person accessing your information. In this interconnected world, our personal and professional lives are intertwined with technology. With every login, every transaction, and every email sent, we expose ourselves to various risks. Cyber criminals lurk in the shadows, waiting to exploit any vulnerability they can find. It is our duty, both as individuals and organizations, to fortify our digital defenses through the power of multi-factor authentication. The concept of multi-factor authentication is simple yet powerful. It adds an extra layer of security by requiring users to present at least two or more factors to verify their identity. It combines something we know, like a password, something we have, like a smartphone, and something unique to us, like a fingerprint or facial recognition. By implementing this, we substantially reduce the chances of unauthorized access to our accounts. As Albert Einstein famously said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. The same holds true of cybersecurity. We must adapt and embrace new methods to protect ourselves from evolving threats. Multi-factor authentication is one such innovation that has proven its effectiveness time and time again. MFA is now considered to be a cornerstone element of cyber hygiene. With what we see in the way of attacks these days, it's really no longer optional. MFA is an essential tool for helping prevent unauthorized access to your valuable assets and customer data. Let us remember the words of Steve Jobs, who said, stay hungry, stay foolish. In the realm of cybersecurity, we must remain hungry for knowledge, hungry for innovation, hungry for solutions to protect our digital existence. Let us not be foolish by clinging to outdated security methods. Instead, let us embrace MFA and urge technology companies to make MFA available as a default option. Join us at CISA on this journey of reinforcing our cybersecurity, one authentication at a time, so we can secure our world. Those are my final thoughts, but I would be happy to answer any questions you all may have. Back to you now, Jay. Wow, Grant. Thank you for all the information that you just covered. It was both incredibly informative and insightful. So yes, next I'd love to get your perspective on a few intriguing questions that we've received. So first, how has the rise of remote work and online services affected the adoption of multi-factor authentication? Yeah, so we've seen a, a significant growth in the adoption of multi-factor authentication. Um, some of that is driven by increased remote work and, and less reliance on like people being at the office inside of a certain specific network. But I think, frankly, a lot of that is also driven by the, the growth of the, of the cybersecurity risks and threats that we face. The actors have, you know, gotten very good at compromising systems that don't have MFA, frankly. And so that's, that's a big part of it as well. Um, so regarding multi-factor authentication, uh, can MFA be used to prevent social engineering attacks or are there other security measures needed? Yeah, so MFA can be used to prevent social engineering attacks. In fact, all forms of MFA will provide some protection against simple social engineering attacks. Um, mechanisms like the FIDO, uh, the FIDO authentication or the pass keys are very resistant to social engineering phishing attacks and are, that's why they're considered the gold standard of MFA. Very helpful. And I'm excited to hear more about FIDO uh, as it continues to develop. Um, regarding MFA and the type of accounts, so are there certain types of data or accounts that require stronger multi-factor authentication than others? Yeah, so we would say, I think at this point, you know, MFA should be enabled across the board for all users in all contexts. Um, that's that's just the nature of the threat that we face right now. Um, for some situations, for example, privileged accounts that administer, you know, sensitive systems, 
um, or 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 systems or applications that hold you know high impact business data or, or personal data, you know stronger forms of MFA are, uh, like FIDO or like um, other mechanisms are are likely appropriate. Um, you know, I would also say a lot of it depends on you know the, the in the context of a person, like what kind of risks that person faces. You know, are they someone who, for example, maybe they're an activist or maybe they have a sensitive job or something like that. Um, that that factors into it as well. But we would say, you know, at this point across the board, just generally enabling MFA is a best practice for everyone. And there are some some further nuances for some some situations beyond that. Excellent. Thank you, Grant. Uh, you know, Grant, we truly appreciate you taking the time to teach all of us about the importance of MFA today and how we can all take these meaningful steps to help secure our world. So now that you've heard a bit more about our national cybersecurity challenges and the work being done among government and private industry to keep everyone safe, I have a request of everyone on today's webinar. On behalf of CISA, please help us all protect and secure our critical infrastructure by joining the team's effort to raise awareness and spread the word that cybersecurity is for everyone. And it's about the people. Now, we offer many tools and resources on our CISA.gov website for organizations and individuals to participate in Cybersecurity Awareness Month, whether to create your own campaigns or just simply sharing the information with your friends and neighbors. Now, we're asking everyone to join the online conversation about Cybersecurity Awareness Month via social media platforms using the hashtag SecureOurWorld and Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Even better, join the global conversation by sharing Cybersecurity Awareness Month messages among your personal and professional networks. So help spread the word in your communities by passing on cybersecurity tips to your friends, your families, your coworkers, and show them how easy it is to improve their own cybersecurity and staying safe online. Now, your efforts will help strengthen the national cyber defense and create a safer and more secure cyber ecosystem for everyone. Again, a big thank you to all of you for celebrating the 20th annual Cybersecurity Awareness Month with us. Please join us for the next two webinars in this series, which will cover how to recognize and report phishing and the importance of keeping your software up to date. Now you can sign up for them through Eventbrite, just like you did this webinar. If you have questions or would like to access CISA's resources, please visit cisa.gov forward slash secure our world. And let's all work together to secure our world. Thank you.